city of contrasts, east and west, black and white, Germans and Japanese. Some of Berlin's greatest parks are the ones of cities really f forgotten. You see people have come in here and make a home for themselves and quite humble, nice little places, not for me, but uh, probably a fire back in the, uh, when the divide was still happening. Um, the Japanese nation tended to use a lot of uh, fire-based weapons such as Molotov cocktails, exploding cats, bikes covered in petrol, and they just, just throw them in. And you can see this is a result of um, one of those previous attacks. We're standing here in the typical Japanese lounge room from the 1930s. And you see here the remnants of the tajami mats that you once laid out on the floor. And over here, if you look closely, Japanese men, always keen golfers, <laughs> always up for a round. <laughs> okay. And, and uh, for the Germans, they kept in the house. Yep, yeah, they always had German servants. They used to have this little crawl space down here where the servants could sort of, you know, sleep for the night or grab some buttermilk or go and cry for a while. And this served two purposes. When the Germans would attack the Japanese, the Japanese would jump in there and cry and uh, have some buttermilk. Berlin Wall, famous. This is what they call Johnson's Gully. It was the place where Graham Johnson, transatlantic explorer, first sailed up the railway tracks in 1683. Johnson little is known about this man other than he was an intrepid and amazing explorer. I'm standing here in what kind of you may recognise to be as Jimmy Chow's sweet and sour concern. The first Asian takeaway ever to come to Berlin around 1786. Oh, it's a magnificent institution. Let's go have a bite. <laughs> ま、by the time of the 17th Japanese attack in the early 1930s, almost nothing was left of Berlin. A devastated people took what they had and left, not looking back, leaving the spoils of their once proud city to their captors, the victorious Japanese. For the Japanese, the period saw an unrestrained period of orgiastic excess as the youth engaged in non-stop revelry from dusk till dawn. The partying took its toll, and within several years, Berlin was underwater. A biblical flood, some said, to drive out the infernal Japanese. <laughs> wow. Yeah. wow. I walked the bags like this. So the good thing, I could have been here, you know? I could have lived here. But it's this entirely different culture. culture. It's like, wow. The human evolution process so greatly, yeah. you feel like... With all your power, tower, 
How about her? Towers. Towers. Much has been written about the early Berliners. What do we really know about the early Berliners? Well, we know they descended from the Romans some 2,000 years ago. And we know their gods were very mysterious. They didn't take on the Christianity of their forefathers. Instead, they took on a light jazz singer known forever as Sirius B. He appeared in New York in the 40s and quickly gained popularity for his light, fluid style. Let's look at this temple that was made to him some 250,000 years ago. You see over here what seem to be some mummies with some uh, indistinguishable uh, writing on the walls. And uh, a puffy little man with an eye in his chest with blood coming out from a hole between his two green eyes. Down here you see what appears to be the structure of the universe according to these early Berliners. We have, of course, the Antichrist up here, some kind of huge Egyptian penis, the huge Egyptian penis going into space, a picture from a sci-fi movie, what looks to be the Loch Ness Monster, some random numbers corresponding to, we don't know what exactly, a little chocolate man, the year 2009, a druid handcrafted copper plate, a waving little marshmallow, an astronaut's head, and finally, what we believe is the goddess of the culture, Ruti, and her dog. Japanese. And I just wanted to say that I love you and I miss you. And um, 